<laughs> I always have to come in dancing. You know one thing about me, I gotta get my groove on, okay? <laughs> we will be doing a video today that will be so cool. Listen, if you have never made a strawberry milkshake candle, this is the video for you. If you have never made a food candle, this is the video for you. Today we'll be going all in. We will be doing the intense part of it. That means we'll be whipping it. We'll be adding color. We will be going in in this video. So I want you to go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Listen, you do not want to miss the awesome things that will be happening in this studio this week. Yes, it is a hot mess in my studio. I've been working nonstop just to make sure that I do something that brings excellence to the channel. I don't like just throwing candles on here. I like to do stuff. I like to practice. And that's what I've been doing. So I've just been making a mess all the way around here, guys. <laughs> I hope you guys are okay because this is your home. This is my home. We are getting comfortable in here. Amen. So look, I want you to have a glass cup. Now, you can go to Dollar Tree and get these. These are just like the rocker glasses. That's what they're actually called. They're called rocker glasses. They're only a dollar. You can get them from Dollar Tree. You can get them from um, Dollar General. They got them at Dollar General. It's different places where you can buy the rocker glasses. Just go online and look it up. Or you can use something else, but make sure that it is actually a straight-sided vessel. You do not want to use anything that has like a curve in it, like a mason jar, because it will be harder for you to pour this red lines. Now, you see these red lines? What these red lines are is candle wax. What I did was take the, I take a cup and I just simply pour lines down the sides of the glass. And when I do that, when I pour my wax in, I'm going to show you guys how to do it, but this is how we get this cool milkshake effect by doing that. I love this. This is so cool. I mean, I really love it. I'm in love with these candles. Now, the wax that we will be using today, we will be using 6006 as a base. I always use 6006 because 6006 gives an amazing hot throw. When, you, when it comes down to making dessert candles, I'm not even going to lie to you, I never smell the whip. Like when it's burning down, that's the only part of the candle I do not smell. I do not want my customer to ever say to me, I love the candles, they're beautiful, but I can't smell nothing. So I use 6006 as the base. I pour it to about right here. And then at the top, I use the 464. I do like 464 because it can hold up to 12% fragrance. I only use it at 10%, but it can hold up to 12%, meaning that it has a great hot throw. So that's my go-to. And also the texture is unmatchable. I love the texture. The, te the texture is very detailed. So what I want you to do is I want you to get some red wax. I don't want you to have, there's a difference. <laughs> red wax and red dye. I want you to take some old candle wax that you already have, and believe me, I have so much of it laying around. Take some old candle wax, and I want you to go ahead and melt it down, and I want you to turn it to the color red. Once you get it all the way red, then we're gonna go ahead and pour it inside the cup, because I wanna demonstrate to you how I achieved this great milk dripping look all inside the candle. All right, so. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull my little Presto Pot over here. Inside my Presto Pot, I already have like a cool cup. Guys, I got all this stuff in front of me. I already started making these candles and I done posted them up. So more than likely I'll be selling them within the next week or so. I like to let my stuff cure for a little bit. I don't like to really sell anything that has 464 abruptly. Like I, I just, I don't move quick with that. I hold off on it. So what you do is you take your glass and you go ahead and you pour a little bit of candle. I'm making a mess, but that's all right. The thing, good thing about candle mess is you can just scrape it up. You just pour a line. You see, I just poured a line down into the cup. So you take it and you're just going around, just pouring lines. That's all you're doing. It. And it's not even a such thing as making a mess with this inside the cup because it's easy to just mix it into your candle and it just i mean it makes a very vibrant red as you can see and it gives the look of a real milkshake so you just pretty much go around the whole cup putting lines in it okay so after you finish doing that make sure first of all you do your wick i didn't do a wick in this one because i'm not about to go through the whole process again because i pretty much got all of mine made Melt down some wax, guys. 
and after you melt down your wax, I want you to go ahead and pour it into the candle. Like pour your white wax into the candle. Do not let your candle get hard. Do not let it solidify fully. I want you to do this while it is still liquid. It's so much easier to do it while it's still liquid. So guys, let me go ahead and show you what I actually mean, what I'm doing, and how I achieve this look. Have you a heat gun? Have you a piping bag? Have you a piping tip? I'm just giving you your list. Have you a cherry embed, strawberry, whatever fruit you want to use. Make sure you have your embed. Also, make sure you go to Dollar Tree and get you a paper straw. Do not use plastic straws. I cannot stress this enough. Plastic is very, very, very dangerous and it burns. It's harmful, especially to a pregnant woman. So make sure you have a paper straw. I recommend those. Also, when a customer goes to burn this, make sure you tell them, hey, first remove the straw. So if you're doing it and you have a pop-up shop, look them in their eyes and say, hey, hey, I'm talking to you. Remove the straw, please. Do not burn the straw. It is paper. It will burn. Paper burn. <laughs> so guys, look. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get some wax. I'm gonna melt my wax down and we're gonna go ahead and get this started. Get you a heat gun. You do not wanna use a blow dryer. Blow dryers are good, but it just takes a lot of energy and a lot more time to get it done with a blow dryer. So go on Amazon and I'll definitely put the link in the description box where you can order this. Also, uh, this coming week, I will have some links posted in my boxes below for different uh, tools that you could be using as well to make your candles and also vessels, like different places where you can buy vessels. That's something else I want to link inside the description box this week. Guys, I want to help you as much as possible to save money. It is becoming a little bit difficult for candle makers to get the things that we need, like when it comes down to wax. You know, we had to go through a whole thing with 6006. We had to go through a whole lot with wicks. A lot of the wicks on candle science are definitely <laughs> won't be back in stock to this date, that date. So I'm just trying to find ways to keep you out of the darn websites where you're buying and paying all this shipping. Let's start shopping locally. Locally for me is going to places like Walmart, Target. You know, they have dollar glasses too. What you have to do is make sure that if you do take the dollar route, and you buy your glasses from Dollar Tree, which we pretty much tested all the Dollar Tree ones. And or you buy it from Walmart, get you a size, like basically if I'm using an Eco 16, I wanna use an Eco 18 or an Eco 20 inside that, that glass. And I wanna test with a very hot wick just to see if it's gonna break. If it don't break with a hot wick, it's not gonna break with a less, you know, number wick. So if it don't break with a 20, it's not gonna break with a 14. And that's the way I test my candles. I also put mine in the oven and also use a heat gun against it. I mean, I really pretty much use and abuse and beat the crap out of my jars just to make sure that they don't break. So guys, I'm heating up my wax now. I'm gonna go ahead and the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pour, we're gonna decorate, and we're gonna get this strawberry shortcake candle done. All right. Okay guys, so for this part, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the jars um and i'm going to take the hot glue gun but first what i'm going to do is i'm going to mix up my fragrance i just want you to just pretty much see this so i'm just going to cut out my body i'm mixing up my fragrance i'm binding it together okay so what i did was mix some strawberry and vanilla fragrance together sometimes i like to mix them because i'm making like a cream i would like for it to be mixed so you take it and you start pouring it into your containers. And it should be a little cloudy if you're using 6006 because you don't want to pour 6006 in a place where your fragrance is not. I do low temperatures because I like my fragrance to be really strong. So that's my preference. You know, everybody is different. I definitely pour at low temperature, so it should be cloudy. I never have holes. I never have, um, like, you know, denting and, you know, all that kind of stuff that comes along with it that people complain about. I never experienced those problems pouring at these temperatures. So this is like my favorite temperature to pour at. Normally I pour about 150, oh, this is perfect, wow. Okay, so basically what you're doing now is you're gonna stabilize your wigs. Put them in the middle, make sure you place them in the middle. You don't want it burning towards the jar, like, you know, somebody get your candle. And so I always laugh, laugh at those posts 
that people be posting in the darn wick is all the way over there on the other side. I'm like, well, that ain't what the wick was doing. Backing that thing up in the truck. What was going on? So right now I got my soy. It's solidifying, so I might just go ahead and add my fragrance at any moment. So if you see me doing that, that's what's going on. It's solidifying. I just, I don't really put it in the refrigerator until I add my fragrance. Yes, I put fragrance in my whip and I put fragrance in my solid. Because a candle needs to smell like a candle, period. So I add the fragrance to everything. So after I got my wig stabilized and they're sitting straight up, and remember, you can always go back and fix this because when you use the whip topping, you really can just still move the whip around. I mean, move the uh, wick around and it don't look crazy like it would do if it was just a straight pour candle. So now what we're doing is we're just going to sit some of these to the side because we can't do everything all at one time. And we're just going to work on these one by one. And this is what you're going to do. You're going to take your hot glue gun. I mean, not your hot glue gun. You're going to take your heat gun. And you're going to go ahead and basically, I use mine on the lowest setting because that's just me. You're going to go ahead and you're going to melt. As you can see, like it's going to start, I'm going to pull it closer. It's going to start melting the red wax and it's going to go inside. It's going to go down inside. As you can see, you see it's just come, it's kind of falling down. You see, it's like missing. One spot is missing. So you're going to melt that because this is how you get the strawberry effect. Like where it looks like a strawberry milkshake. I always take a break because um, what I do is I spin it around a little bit just to kind of get it going. I spin it around. So I'm cleaning up the top and as I clean up the top, I'm going to make my way down to the bottom. And when I make my way down to the bottom, I'm going to use the gun, the gun against the strips on the bottom because I don't want these lines all inside. The, that's just not my preference. I like it to look a little bit more, you know, I don't like it to look so staged, you know, where it just kind of just got those lines and it just, you know, so you just take your, your hot heat gun. <laughs> And you just go down the line, the whole entire line. You, okay, so all of that is melted all around. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna go ahead and just start twisting it. And at this point, you can just take the wick stabilizer. You really don't even need that. I don't even know why I did that. And you just start twisting it. And as you twisting it, I really can't pick it up because it's really hot. You see that it's just kind of going around like tie-dye and it's breaking those lines up all around the jar. So those lines are not like really, um, they breaking down, they breaking down. So you just kind of twist it. Then you take your wick stabilizer, put it back on. And that's how you do the rest of these jars. As they are solidifying, the next thing I want to do is get my whip wax ready for takeoff. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm taking the temperature down to 134, which is actually like pretty, pretty low. I don't even like it getting that low. I'm going to go ahead and mix my fragrance in. I'm going to whisk it for a few seconds. And then I'm going to take it and place it in the refrigerator. Guys, what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and take some red um, wax like we took earlier. And I want you to take that red wax and begin to melt it down because we're going to use some of this red wax inside of our candle whipped wax. We need to have a little shade of red. We don't want it to just be boring and white. We want to have like in this one, I put like specks of red. It came out like specks. Well, you guys know how it looks when it's finished, but I use specks in it just so... I would have like a little bit more than just, you know, you don't want it just to be so regular. Like, you know, you, you get what I'm saying. We don't do things regular. We do things like extra. You know, we are so different on this channel. So go ahead and get your wax together. Get your red dye. Now, listen, I'm not using red dye. I'm using red candle wax that I had before. Like old wax that you don't need to make new you know, like, or you maybe you have a little bit that you can kind of mix with some old embeds that you got or an old candle, like take your old candle, cut it up. I usually stick a knife inside the candle jar and just kind of like, just, you know, cut like pizza, pizza blocks out of it to get it out of there. And 
I typically use that. Like, I don't let none of my wax go to waste, guys. Like, for real. I'm one of them kind of people that's like a zero waste kind of girl. Like, I don't like wasting anything. So, take your wax. Put your wax in the refrigerator until it solidifies. If you are using 464, it will take a little bit longer to solidify. So, I suggest putting it in the refrigerator and then coming back to it. And when we come back to it, make sure first of all, first and foremost, now that you got these taken care of, make sure every single wick is centered. Like that should be something that I shouldn't even have to tell you guys. You should automatically know. But just make sure it's centered because you definitely want it to be centered. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to let this, let this wax sit. We're going to let it get hard. We're going to whip it. We're going to pipe it. And then we're going to be done. We're going to put our embeds on the candle and we're going to pretty much be done. So that's going to be the next portion of this video. All right. Okay, y'all. This is the greatest part of the video, the, video, the part where you guys look forward to. This is where we go and we pipe. But there is a special technique that I want to teach you guys before we even go and pipe anything. I'm going to put on some gloves because I don't feel like this stuff being all over my fingers. This is ready. As you can see, it's nice, nice and uh, solidified and ready for pipe and action. I'm going to go ahead and take another whisk because the more you whisk it, the more it thins out. I'm not completely ready for it to be so thick. So I'm going to thin it out just a little bit so when it gets in my piping bag, it can take, you know, that same consistency in the piping bag. So when you whisk it, it turns back into like ice cream all over again, <laughs> like icing. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I, I mean, I already did that, but I want to show you guys something really quick. I took some red wax and I melted it down and I told you guys I was going to do it. I'm just gonna mix a little bit of my red into my whip. I'm gonna mix a little bit into it because I don't want it to be, and don't mix too much because you don't want it to turn completely red. I don't want it to be completely red, but I do want it to have like little specks. As you can see, it has like little specks coming into it. So you just put a little bit in there. Me, I want a little bit more, because that's not really enough. So I'm just adding a little bit more, and I'm adding it as I go as well. The more I get into the batch, I'm going to add more. But you don't mix it to the point where you turn the wax pink. You don't want it to turn pink, you want it to have specs. So now we're going to go ahead and take our spatula and begin to load up our piping bag. I'm not going to add all of it to the piping bag because it's just it makes it harder for me to pipe when it's that way a lot of people still be asking me like oh, i want to see piping videos i just don't feel like i got it all so this is just perfect for you you who want to learn how to pipe this is your time to shine <laughs> listen when i come back i gotta clean up this bowl because the bowl got a whole lot on the edges all right so if you don't feel so confident about this being enough, like this little bit of pink, now you can go ahead and add a little bit more pink, I mean red to it. You can add a little bit more red to it and you can kind of take it and take your spatula and twist it in. Like I'm, I'm adding a little red to the top, take your spatula and kind of twist it in, but I'm just gonna leave it right there and I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna do mine. So it's on the top. But I'm just gonna go ahead and press it and move it down a little bit. So when you get to the top, it's gonna be like more red that's gonna come out. So my wax is solidified, it's ready, ready for takeoff. This one I messed up a little bit earlier, so I'm gonna just go over that before I finish. But this one, I'm just gonna go ahead and start piping. You wanna turn it as you go because, I mean, you could do it this way or you could do it another way. Like that. You can just kind of lay it like that. Just going around in circles. I mean, this is a good way to do it. Don't get me wrong. I be liking sometimes just to turn it. So you just pretty much just going around. Remember, you use you can use the star tip, the one that has like that deep star. I wish I kind of knew the numbers of the the tips, but I just buy them. 
I don't be thinking about the numbers or nothing, but for your sake, I'm gonna make sure I remember it. So this, this is how I got it piped in here. And I got my plastic kind of dragging around on mine and I should've cut it all, but it's really not affecting the piping of it. But I am going to fix it. All right, that's good, that's pretty good. I just want a little bit more coming on this side. And remember, don't waste too much wax on one because you got plenty more to do and you don't want to just have a whole bunch of whip topping on one and the rest of them is just stuff. 